Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity podcast. Hello, and welcome to Create Clarity with Charity. Today, I have an amazing guest. I'm so excited he's here and he'll make your life easier. Jeff Ettringer. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how's it going, Charity? Good. I'm so happy you're here. You have such a vast knowledge on all kinds of things. So I'm um, happy I'm here too. Thank you for being here and sharing your wealth of knowledge with my audience. Um, so Jeff's the CEO of Make Anything Easy, and he has had a long career of entrepreneurship along with philanthropy, world travel, and, you know, TED Talks, and all kinds of amazing things. So we are in for a treat. (laughs) (laughs) Yay. So Jeff, let's talk about you. So before we get into all your cool, handy dandy new um, tools that you have for the entrepreneurs out there that are going to make their lives easier, let's talk about you and talk about your journey as an entrepreneur. Because as you know, this show is about you know, the journey, the high, the lows, the mountains. And I want to hear about some of your best experiences through time. So we chatted before and I love that you're kind of, you came from Iowa. My family's from Iowa too. Oh, cool. Yeah. And corn, corn country. So, um, (laughs) you grew up, um, in, on the fields too, in farms, right. Working hard and, um, pulling your weight and all that kind of stuff so you kind of knew about how to like profit off the earth and you know saw your family and business and making things happen so tell us about how that all started and how that kind of fueled you yeah the what what occurred is um you know my both my grandfathers were farmers and so they were kind of entrepreneurs on their own so i would get to go to the farm um and uh you know participate in all of that just hard work and and just getting things done and figuring out you know the the quickest and the easiest way and using that um, mountain of knowledge from previous people to to um, determine how to do things. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, uh, but then I was in a university town in Cedar Falls, Iowa. So uh, my stepdad taught at the university for 43 years. So I got to um, get a lot of exposure to computer systems with statistics and um, uh, which he taught and then psychology. And then my mom was a teacher as well. Um, And uh, and then my dad actually uh, worked at John Deere and wow. uh was electrician so he would teach me how to fix things um wow. so at a, yep so at a young age i was exposed to um just the entrepreneurial world my grandfather uh would um give me watermelons from arkansas he would drive them up and uh, i would go with him from arkansas we'd spend our summers down there and we'd drive them up to iowa and then we'd sell them to the grocery stores or individual people and then he would give me you know, like five or 10 watermelons that I could sell myself. Oh, awesome. He said, for helping me, here's some watermelons. And he didn't give me any money. I'm like, why, why didn't I get money? Like, oh, oh, he gave me watermelons. And then he said, go sell them. And my gosh, you can sell watermelons for a lot of money. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> yeah, I mean, a good lesson. Yeah, as a little kid, I would take the wagon and, and pull it door to door. And that was my first experience of, you know, interacting with people where they lived is selling it door to door watermelons. And then, um, in junior high, uh, we had a, a competition for selling magazines and subscription services. And I quickly figured out like, um, that if you sell the New York times, you can make a lot. And so that subscription, I went through the whole catalog, what, which, which one has the biggest profit margin. And so that's what I kept on pushing. And I won like the competition and they gave me all of these prizes. And so I was like, this is awesome. Like, I just have to go and tell people about the things that I find. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And that's when I kind of learned, you know, that you, you get rewarded for some of those things. Um, so that was my first taste of, 
of being an entrepreneur um, at a young age. But then I, I recall the first time that I was swore at uh, uh -huh. by a, uh, a banker. Um, <laughs> it was actually the vice president of the bank. My aunt had told me that he had um, a bunch of uh, lawns and that he that I'd be able to mow them and I could get paid to do that. So I went in and sat down with this banker and I'm in this, you know, this is I was just fresh into high school and I'm like looking around going where what am I doing? I'm sitting across from the vice president of this huge bank. <laughs> um, and uh, so I had a discussion with him. I said, where are your properties? Let me look at your list. And I went over all the stuff and then I, I handed it to him and and he said, OK, here, good deal. And so we, we let's do business. And I was like, cool. And then he goes, he turned and looked at me and he goes, uh, this is when he swore at me. He goes, um, he goes, you're quite the entrepreneur. <laughs> What's that mean? I had no idea. I went home and I went and told my mom, I said, I think this banker swore at me. I don't know what this means. Like, and she goes, what do you say? And I said, he called me an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. like, sound like manure. I was like, yeah. what was that? And so she she had me look it up, look it up in the dictionary as we always have in our family as you research stuff yourself. And I was like, oh yes, I am a businessman. That's, that's me. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been yes. doing that. So that's, that's when I, a, that's when I learned. Yeah. That's when I learned. Is that where you did that initial business pitch and you got the half a million or was that for a different oh, business? No, that was, um, uh, that was a different business, but yeah, oh. that was, um, yeah, that was, uh, later on in, in, um, in my career that I was able to, um, figure out some things. I've had so many different opportunities, um, in corporate world, um, tried that, but then, um, you know, from, from doing that, uh, from high school, I went into college and started doing, um, electronic engineering. Uh, so oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I spent uh, a few years, um, getting my associate's degree in electronics. So oh. down to the chip level. Um, so actually repairing each little chip and, and figuring out, not repairing, learning about and programming at the chip level for, for just machine code and, mm -hmm. um, and actually coding things. And then we'd play around with university um, computers as well at the same time um, I would get to uh, because my stepdad was there. And so once I learned that, I went and uh, became an electrician with that degree um, nice. and quickly learned after a year of, of, of being an electrician uh, that I figured stuff out really quick. And I told uh -huh. an engineer, Hey, here's a problem. Here's how you fix it. And he goes, ah, I don't need to listen to you, kid. You're not old <laughs> enough to know what's going on. And I explained it. And then he, two months later, it broke. Like I said, it was going to, and he used all the ideas to repair it and make it work and didn't say a word, didn't give a credit. And I was like, Aww. wait a second. And I didn't need it. It was more the idea like, I could be an engineer. I don't yeah. I'll, I'll go get the degree. So after a year, I started back into school a year out of college. I started back into school while I worked full time. And so I worked all night and in the morning I went and um, uh, worked, uh, did school. And then I went and played billiards at night and then worked billiards, school, work school, billiards. And wow. uh, yeah, I did that for five, four years then transferred everything. I actually got a pension pin from my company five years uh, and then went to Iowa State full time. Wow. Um, so I did 12 years of college ultimately, wow. but that's where I started in uh, electrical engineering, then did industrial, uh, changed it to mechanical and got a, uh, um, a business. So it's wrapped up in business, which actually um, they use that degree at the university to call it um, uh, entrepreneurship or engineering with entrepreneurship. Perfect. They used my model uh, to do that. And that's, that's what they you can get a degree at Iowa State University for engineering and entrepreneurship now. That's awesome. Cause that yeah. is like a very valuable skill and tool, right? Like everyone yep. needs an engineer at some point in their business lifespan, life cycle yeah. and oh. in life in general. I mean, so that, that's a, that's the, one of the sharpest tools in the shed, I think. So <laughs> you took all that knowledge, right? And you created your businesses with that engineering mindset, um, mm -hmm. connecting all the pieces, getting down to the core root of the mainframe, right? Like, yeah, you, you, it's it's really how things should be built. So it's a very strategic way of thinking. And I think that like what you've been doing in the last few years with making everything easy and the and the blue chip that you've kind of integrated that whole thing. So that's yeah, awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So that's it's really what... innovative. 
when 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 I was at the university too, I got to work on the uh, world's first electronic digital computer, which is right here. Oh yeah. And uh, I got to build a replica of that when I was at Ames Laboratory. Got to work with a lot of brilliant scientists and some amazing minds. Um, yeah. But we did the replica of the the computer, which was built at Iowa State University in 1939. Um, and then also I got to build and race solar cars. So I was on the cutting edge of carbon fiber and all the materials. And then also figuring out where the origins of every computer and every device that we have now, which is binary capacitors and then uh, adding and subtracting those. Um, so that was a super cool uh, project. Mm -hmm. But like you said, I went on to corporate world um, right out of college and uh, and then was presented with an opportunity um, to then go to, to New Orleans. I was in New Orleans, uh, freshly new. I'd gone through a year of training, too, there uh, um, that and I got let go uh, when I showed up one day. They said, sorry, we're laying off a thousand two hundred people and you're one of them. And I went, what? And so one of the most powerful things you can do as an entrepreneur is having your contacts, yeah. being able to have those people you can call. So I called up the VP. I just started going down my list and uh, I said I was um, out of a job. And, and that was the first 12 minutes after I found out. And uh, he said he'd call back to the next day. Well, he called back in about 15 minutes and said, tell you what, um, a refinery has exploded and we are having a problem because it's going to take two and a half years to rebuild it. It's costing $2.4 million a day. I want to rebuild it in six months. Do you think we can do it? And I said, yes, we can. And he said, great. I need you here now. Get your butt here. And I said, I'd love to, but I can't. Um, and he goes, what? You, yes, you just got laid off. And I said, well, I would, but unfortunately, I don't know where you're at. And he goes, oh, I'm in Aruba on the oh, island. Nice. And I went, oh, yes, I'm, I am there. Yeah. And so that was Friday. That was Tuesday. I hung up the phone. And on Friday, I was in Aruba. And we rebuilt this refinery, which are the pictures right here of the, uh, the refinery that exploded. And oh, so wow. that was when it blew up. And then that was when we completed it six months later uh, oh, wow. with 2 million man hours of oh, uh, completing it. Yeah, so learn how to accelerate. To after... Yeah, accelerate and figure it out and then and then got to relax and um, kind of retired on the island for four months. But I'm telling you, when you when you the see happy island right? workers, yeah, yeah, it's one happy island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dushi Terra. It's like I love sweet. It. Yeah. I love but you, you see how you see how quickly you can do stuff. You realize that by eliminating a lot of those things, you can accelerate something from two and a half years down to six months doing the exact yeah. same thing. I mean, yeah. yeah, just by changing your approach and, you know, really getting down to the core mechanics and seeing, you know, where you can cut hours and yeah, well, and just it's, it's, and it's a mindset because literally we would bring in 100 workers, ask them if they believed that we could complete it in that mm -hmm. short of a period. And half of them, no, and there's no way. You guys are crazy compressing it. And so, okay, anybody who doesn't believe it, you go to this side of the room. Okay, you got, oh, you believe it. Okay, you go over here. And then we said, okay, all you guys, you're going home. Have a great day. Thank you. We just arrived on the plane. Yeah. Well, you can spend the day at the, uh, at the beach, but you're going home. We don't need you. And then he leaned over and said, of those 100 people, those 50 left on this side, half of those just stepped over because they didn't make a choice. So they, you need to help weed out those individuals that still don't truly believe we can do it. Uh -huh. And it really was, it was just someone's mind. They would just put roadblocks up, make things, you know, like they would just make something up to prevent them from taking that next step instead of being forward thinking. So we'd constantly yeah. refresh or they'd just get tired or things would happen. And so being able to track that and, and help people understand that and then eliminate any roadblocks um, was, was key. And you, yeah. you saw the difference. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, mindset is everything. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Cause a lot of the audience, I mean, they're really here for that, that shift. What was that, that literally gave you that power to change a project that was going to be two years to six mindset, like literally in business, it's the same thing. Like how long is it going to take you to hit that KPI or those profit margins? Well, you can decide and then you can really decide and then yeah. just like, you know, really feel it coming. And that's the thing. Some people just second guess themselves and they're not certain 
but once you're certain and you believe you, like anything can manifest. So that's beautiful. So after that, and you, you fix the, the, um, refinery and you're kind of retired then and yeah, you the, went on some global tours and no, actually I went, I went back and started, I, I went back and, and started working for a company just for a short period. The re only reason it was a short period, I was helping them create some cool stuff for Exxon and some, uh, automated, like just this cool screens and everything that were uh in 2000 um uh early 2000s that that were just amazing and uh the company i was working for another company bought them came in and said great we're so happy that we have all of the customers for oil and gas we don't want any of the manufacturing um clients so we're getting rid of them and we don't want any of the any of the employees we have our own you guys can have a great day oh, right. like, what just happened not again and so yeah. i i talked to um my uh one of the co-workers that was working with me and said hey this is a great opportunity we already have relationships with 3m we can go in and take over and start doing their stuff and actually you know service them and uh and that's when in two and a half months uh made a quarter million dollars we just it just made landed a project and just started rolling from there nice. and uh yep and that that was my first business integra controls and then um started visual controls and and uh, did all of that and then went on um uh and then for family came here to atlanta looking at trying to um uh i came back to corporate world so i said oh cool that was great but for you know to move here for family was important mm -hmm. i'm here and uh doing corporate things again another layoff another thing i mean just all kind of, not a good fit yeah. through all this you know just through different stuff um and then my father had a, a a stroke and i was like bummed out about that and i was like you know what i, I need to really find out what what i should do um yeah. and that's I, I went to dubai um and i looked at starting a business there and so for all you entrepreneurs thinking there's greener grass somewhere else um you know what in the u.s you're 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 golden like this yeah. is this is the place to be it don't is an american that, dream right yeah, yeah don't really don't is. think that there are people yeah there, there's nothing else any other any other country that that's going to provide for you um i found that out pretty quickly doing some security things and interesting things so i i came back to the u.s um and then uh um started well i designed an online wall thickness measurement system that measures the thickness of plastic at a high speed and then some other projects and some cool things and then um and then i took off i i decided that i would start my company make anything easy mm -hmm. but before i did i decided i would do some philanthropy and figure out and travel and just take some time to go inward because that's the most important thing. And that's what I did is I, I've spent the past three years just traveling um, and figuring out what it is, why I'm doing things um, and went inward. And that nice. made a huge difference. I mean, yes. So well, that's why we're here, right? The evolutionary yeah. entrepreneur, you know, giving the tips and tricks and the insight, you know, the heart brain connection, not just operating from capitalism right. or monetizing everything and greed and power and ego and all these wonderful yeah. things that really high level CFOs and CEOs, you know, business owners, they all think, Oh, I'll have the nicest car, the biggest house. I can just, you know, um, it's, it's more of like a look or something, but once you've been through the gauntlet, like you, you've explored corporate, you've had mm -hmm. several different businesses, you've seen the rise and fall, you know, the office politics, all yeah. that, that happens, it gets old. Right. And there's a lot yeah. of us that were like stuck in corporate for like way too long. And that we nope. do have a skill or a trade. Like you could take your engineering, you can take oh, your yeah. knowledge and you can start your own firm all day. Right. Yep. But it's really about making that decision. So as you were saying, your first, your first business, the one that you walked in the bank and got that half a million dollar loan, just like with, you know, and then, and then making 250 K your first two months out of corporate after being part of several layoffs. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty Valley low, right? So we usually like to hit that Valley low and find out how, you know, do you, did you find that creative within you to, or that strength, that energy to bounce back so quick to start this innovative company? So what's in the secret sauce for you? Like, I heard you talk about inner, inner work, like you went traveling yeah. you to find yourself, like what is the real mission of your next phase of life? So let's talk about some of your secret sauce. 
Yeah. So, so I, when I, when I started really thinking about what is it that I enjoy, what gives me energy, what really kind of um, resonates with me, I started, I, I think that was the most important part is coming in, just going inside, looking inside and figuring out why I'm doing anything. And that's when I came up with the name. I had a big, bunch of different ideas on oh, the let's name. Let's go I, there. Let's go. Where I'm going to go to the easy. red car. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to so go to the said, red card, not anything make anything easy. easy. Yeah, yeah, make that's anything it. easy. That's yeah, making it easy. It's red card dot make anything easy dot com, you guys. Yep. And um, yeah, let's talk about this. This is so innovative. And yeah. Cool. Yeah. So so this is uh this is um uh the red the red card site. So I have my card and you can probably see a small version of it right now on the the um screen, but I yeah. make I 3D print and then I'm making some carbon fiber versions of this from my knowledge with solar car building and stuff. So I have a high-end uh, luxury red card uh that they'll connect up to all of your devices and connect up to things but it allows you to digitally share with people um your contact information but more importantly um just be part of a community and then your home your smart home your environment um all of that so they can click on order services or products now that'll take them to a um uh, a page that will then let you guys reach out to me in any way that you'd want to. So if you want to just send that and say, hey, I just want to talk to you about AI, artificial intelligence, or I want to talk to you about studios, or so um, that's one of the projects that brings me energy. So I build yeah. studios for people like mine. So yeah. I have all this equipment up here with lights and everything, and I make you look like you're on CNN, make you look <laughs> great on uh, and sound great. Um, and so that's that's what people can do if they want to contact me. Um, but they can also get a hold of me through the red card on it itself. It has a, a way to text message me or send me a message. So then uh, when they purchase it and then all my social media stuff. Okay, there. we're going to dive into that a lot yeah. more, but I want to get back yeah. to the secret sauce. So today, yeah, so yeah. let's get so so yeah, that's it. So here's the deal. Um, the environment. Um, I think that the environment that you're in is important that you figure out what environment are you in and uh that's that was in india there that's the environment on the motorcycle um so having the right gear knowing uh what's around you so i just did a speech um uh last uh two weekends ago on stage um and spoke about uh the environment all the keys to making anything easy uh and i think the key is is to really understand your environment first, figure out your resources, figure out your, oh, that's when I was with Elon Musk in the room, but that was, nice. <laughs> there it was, yeah. And, um, but when you figure out um, what your resources are, you can leverage those. And then how much leverage do you have on those resources? And then your energy around wanting to do it, like in the timing, like, do I have the timing to do this? But yeah. more importantly, the why, like, why am I even leveraging this? What, what's important to me to leverage? Why, why am I trying to make this happen? And mm -hmm. that's what I did with make anything easy. I was, I was like, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm, I'm trying to, to determine what I want to do and how I want to serve people around me. So artificial Keyword, intelligence. Serve yes. people around me. That's the evolutionary and, entrepreneur when you're finally not just about it all about yourself. Yeah. Your ego boosting your bank account. You know, it's about how you serve other people and make their mm -hmm. lives easy. Hey. Yeah. So, and it's really important in this day and age in business that we have that sort of clarity, right? So right. The, that where you took time to stop and reflect and you took time to like really tap into your inside, you know, what, what makes you feel most creative or innovative or passionate, you know, what's going to fuel you the next few years or the rest of your life. So, um, I remember you also talking about, you were doing some breath work, you do yoga and mm -hmm. maybe some other things yep. that really tap into your day to day that help you kind of elevate your energy. So you, yeah. you do have that to, to serve others. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's tracking my energy. Uh, I I've changed my diet completely. Um, I, but I took the time to find out what's, what's good for me. So yeah. I think that was the most important thing is what is it, you know, what makes me feel good? If I eat a bunch of sugar, I feel crappy. I crash within a certain amount of time, eat pasta, but if I eat protein and then drink lots of water, stay hydrated, all of those things, that's, that's when I really noticed the big differences is just 
uh, doing that. And then being around people that, that bring me joy and I can bring joy to them uh, yeah. is important too. Yeah. And okay. So that is the key you guys out there listening, the entrepreneurs that are really looking to find out why, did, why maybe I don't feel fulfilled. You know, I, I have all this skill and talent, right. And I have all these, I have all this money, maybe even, or I have, I have all these things going for me, but, um, you know, I don't feel like I'm fulfilled. So to take time and like step away, you know, take a right. week or a month off and to go reflect about what makes you really happy and excited. So I love what you've yeah. done with, um, well, the red thank card you because uh, the, the red card will yeah. save so and, many. And it has the clubhouse on there too. So yeah. I'm on clubhouse and that's when I got to talk to all these wonderful scientists and people and artificial intelligence, but people from all over the world. Um, it's an audio drop-in app. So I have like 15,000 followers that are on there that I talk to and, and give advice. And we talk about some wonderful ideas. Yeah. You have a really, I think that's how we met was on clubhouse. Yeah. Yep. Um, cause that is like a, an amazing place to, you know, be heard, find new, awesome network of people and, right. um, you know, talk about things that matter. So that opens up a lot of doors for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, it, it got us here. I, I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh, I want to work with charity. I got to work with charity Brown. I was like, <laughs> I need to do this. And so as soon as you got a hold of me, I was like, yes, let's do this because hearing each other's voice, feeling the energy, and then realizing that that works, you can do that so quickly. So the speed at which you do things and optimizing that, like make anything easy is how quickly can you do this? And then eliminating a lot of those barriers for, someone knowing you liking you and trusting you that you're going to do what's you know what you say you're going to do and i yeah. think being and able that's to key entrepreneurs yeah. the follow through is in everything so yep. execution to a business is you know you could you can execute you can execute a business over the weekend okay you got brand new.com brand new yep. ein brand new everything brand new plan 24 hours if you want if you really want to yeah. step on the gas but it's all in the follow through so it's super important to have all these tools set up for the follow through, right? Because if we drop yeah. it there, then we don't have any clients and then we get a bad reputation like ASAP. right. So you really want to think like an engineer when you're going through that process, right? So <laughs> I'm joking. Because yeah. It's like building a machine. Like an, I, I pretty much after 12 years, I, I think like an engineer. That's yeah. kind of one of the power, you know, you, that's the power of it is I, I can talk to the super geeky, super nerdy, awesome. And I, I'm one myself. I'm not saying bad words. I'm not saying entrepreneur. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a bad word. I was like, he's that's like it. renegade status. That's yeah, like gangster renegade. <laughs> but, but the idea that, that, that you can, you can, you know, understand that. Yeah, I'm totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I just, um, cause this is super cool. Cause not only that, do you have this amazing side and you have this great engineering background, you can set up studios, you, you can work with the hardware, the software, you know, you can do yeah. the planning, the execution, you know, I program like, it. Right. And, and when, it. You, when you understand down to that fundamental level, when I go back to this world's first computer, it's just ones and zeros in that binary on or off. And then how do you take and put all of that together? And so that's, yeah. that's the important part is like, how do you make all of those things combine into, you know, what you need to accomplish. And so I always make sure that I start out as the janitor and then work my way until you get to whatever level you want to be. Those titles don't mean a hill of beans. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's other it's how than many, the how good is the wheel turning? So it keeps going yeah. and keeps going. And each area is fine tuned, right? Because right. there can be so many areas that can you know, break or maybe weren't even explored at inception. And so that's why having a coach or a consultant is good because right. for someone that's why clicking this order service product now, which is actually getting a call with Jeff, getting yep. on a, a zoom, talking about your business venture, talking about areas they made it had oversight, right. Or may not yep. even have on their radar. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, and, and it's, and it's really, so, so this is why I, I thought about this when I woke up this morning at five 30 to go do some workout yoga. It was like really hard yoga, but I thought about this. Um, the fact that, you know, when, when someone, I was listening to Alan Watts and he was discussing how, you know, to understand what someone else is going through. So I, I made a note, I said, okay, and I'm writing my book and I'm putting that together. And so I've been writing a lot. And I said, you know, 
I need, if, if you can go in and step into somebody else's shoes, I'll give you something and say, okay, this is exactly how you do it. And these are what you do. And here's how you put it together. And everybody needs to do this. That doesn't work. Where, where the power of what I'm doing and what you're doing is we talk to the people, we under, you understand your client's situation and, yeah. and really sit in what it is that they're dealing with and then help them guide them with your knowledge, looking at what would be the next thing and how can they accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. Instead, yeah. I think sometimes you come with a solution and you go, my 29 step, 32 day, 50 year workout thing is gonna get you healthy. And all you have to do is, and it's, it's no, you need to first healthy, What? how do you define health? I mean, yeah. how do you define those things? Yeah, you don't know if their knee hurts, their shoulder right. hurts. Right, yeah, and, and they can't gotta, do that. Yeah, yeah. and so, so to understand where their limitations and where their, their ability to do stuff. And so I thought about it and went, you know what? I need to pay, make that part of the program too of, of just helping people is, is really understand what they get energized about doing and then do an assessment of that as they're doing those things and go wow they really get energized when they get to talk about this topic and they like these things and you're like that's weird that they like to do that because they're an accountant but yet mm -hmm. when they get creative and they're doing their artwork and they're speaking to people it's a total different person mm -hmm. and so to see where their energy is you can really understand and then help guide that person and then give them the right tools that fit with them um, yeah. instead of inst and, and, and form what you have to offer to fit with what they're doing and shape it in a way that then it works better for them. And that that's yeah. my way of simplifying things. And, and they have a core understanding of it. Then it's just yeah. not like this thing or like this it's relatable, or just like this annoying program. They have to learn. Yeah. To use. That, you said yeah. every morning, if, if I did all the things that I've been told to do, I would be working out five hours a day. I would be eating nothing but, you know, just all these same foods at a certain time. Drink. I wouldn't have time to just live. I would be constantly trying to to live my better life or get to a better life, but never get to live my life. And, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's, that's what and I, and that's I, the I key is to help people live their life while they're doing yeah. business because and, people lose themselves in their business a lot. I, I think, you know what? I, I just realized this too, um, charity, when you're dealing business to business, it's different because that is a entity. That is a business and us being entrepreneurs know that when you shape that, you have all these legal things and all these, all the stuff that you have to conform to. But when you're dealing with an individual and you remove them from that corporation or that business and then deal with them one-on-one -on -one and directly, mm -hmm. then all of that stuff falls away. We can't treat an individual as a corporation. We can't say, cause to have all, here's the contract and here's the stuff that's the way sometimes we try to approach our lives and to have every you know step one step two step three and that is that's that's where i think a lot of it falters where i believe that you're listening to that individual and treating them as a human and understanding that with compassion is heart-centered after going inside and traveling to Morocco, India, the Isle of Man, South Africa, um, uh, Eswatini, um, Ireland, uh, motorcycle in Spain, and all mm -hmm. these things, the highest road in the world. I saw these people, they were so happy. They were relaxed, living their life. They had their kids, and they were in these nomadic children were absolutely just happy as could be. Yeah. They didn't need an iPhone 13 X Pro yeah. <laughs> M2 Studio Super Duper, you know, Ultra <laughs> that just got released yesterday for eight thousand yeah. dollars. You know, yeah, let's get it. They didn't need any of that. They no, they're joyous and free, happy, smelling dandelions running yeah. around, barefoot, loving life, yeah. right? And that's where we need to get our clients back. And you're right about yeah. focusing on the person first instead right. of the business, because it does all start with the owner or the, the you know, the creative or the, the operator. If it's, if it's person to person and not person to business or person yeah. to corporation with corporations yeah. you got to make sure all that legal stuff there but oh, if you're yeah. dealing with clients and one-on-one -on -one, then that that's when you can do that yeah
And actually corporate should do that more in within yeah. the fabric of their corporations is understand their employees and give them the coaching and help them do the inner work and help them yes. live their best life. Even though that they're stuck in the nine to five, they can nurture people. And yeah. that's kind of where I come from with the create clarity with charity. It's about nurturing yes. my audience, nurturing the clients, nurturing my readers by saying, look, it's okay. We've all fallen. We, none of us got here without a bunch of stumbling blocks and roadblocks and right. accounts. like it's, it's not a magic carpet ride and just smooth sailing for everyone. And it's rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, that's the truth. And it's like, you sounded like you've done like this amazing amount of work, but we know that there were highs and lows. I mean, you got laid off, oh. you lost your job several times. You had to kick yeah. back Fire, several times. Like, I'm yeah. done with this, you know, like, but coming back to that place of where you can get renewed you know, where you can renew yourself with your traveling, getting on your motorcycles, yep. you know, doing what you love, being more innovative and creating amazing products like the red card. So yep. I wanted to say one more time. So this red card is an actual physical card. It has yeah. all your information on it. You get a website just like you can this get full screen red. on this. Yeah. Yes. So you can see it. Yep. Red card. Yeah dot make anything easy.com and yep. you get a web page like this you put all your landing pages anything you want people to know about you all your credentials and everything you put it on this card it gets shipped to you you have this cool right yep we'll do, yeah. I'll, I'll in fact what we do is we put it all on there for you it's a white glove service you don't okay. have to do anything oh perfect we're, we're going to do all the research all the stuff and then populate all of the things for you so you just order it and then we send you a card and then we'll grab all of that stuff and then you take a look at it and it'll it'll be like oh i really like this and um i want this change because it's for executives and ceos or anybody who really wants to just make a presence and just show off you know like say hey i've got a you know a luxury card look and and yeah. make that impression by using that um Yay. and there's a bunch of other stuff since i'm 3d printing these i'm tying in carbon fiber and uh kevlar and different stuff it's tying it into automation so i'm putting other chips in it so i'm improving it constantly so that platform will be there it'll just be um i'll be able to take you guys along for the ride for the smart home studios blinds. so what does that run right now yeah so um so the top one's like uh 875 for one yeah. that's and that's for a year mm -hmm. and then uh there's also some other ones that are going to be released for thousands of dollars that'll be like a carbon fire exclusive luxury card Cool. Um, and yeah. you just tap it to any iPhone and all the information drops. Whatever phone. Yep. The... And yep. And then there's different chips that I'll put into it too. So you'll be using it for different stuff um, as well. Since I print these myself and make them and create them. I love so, it. That's yeah. so genius. Yeah, I used so... all the automation that I did in uh, the manufacturing. So I've done contact lenses, surgical sutures, Rice Krispie treats. Wow. Um, just all kinds of different processes for, for different companies. And after you've seen all those things manufactured, you, you kind of figure out pretty quickly what would be good for automation and then how do you control things? So I've been doing it for homes. So oh. that's the environment that you're in. So how do you control yeah. your environment to make it easier to, when you're ready to do your podcast, you just say, you know, computer podcast and it changes everything. So that's what happens here is, my blinds shut, the lights dim, these lights turn on, it sets the uh, desk. And that's so your making... higher end consulting, right? Your, yeah. your studio design. So this is just a gateway in you guys, this red yeah. card. It's really just a, a new innovative way to have your business card. Um, yeah. But Jeff really does, you know, super high end consulting for studio builds, engineering yeah. your, your cool podcasts, your, you know, building, Doing make anything easy. Desk. Make anything so I'm easy. designing a yes. desk yes. that converts into a podcasting station as well. So it's like, yeah. A, yeah. So get really with Jeff, you guys, I know that he has so much to offer you guys. So I know, um, innovation um it's no cost strategy call is that what this link the yep, very top yeah just one? order server and and that's yeah that that's the just the one at the top you'll be able to click on that and then get a hold of me that way but awesome so you guys go check out redcard.com make anything easy and uh get with jeff and get on a strategy call and he will help you know, re-innovate your office space along with these awesome red digital cards that will have all your info and you get a hot snazzy website with all your links <laughs> connected to it. So it's like well, link tree, but more advanced, right? 
no oh, yeah no it's not even like that but that's that's but, but the the idea is that it's going to evolve with you a community um of people and then as we build out the app and everything else that will integrate into your space um with the with the desk and with the other things that are happening that allow you to just do you know if there's problems software artificial intelligence all of that different stuff that that uh that i work on so that's the card that's the card um, and you can see how it's printed so i print this off and then you just carry this around and then i have a metal one and then i also make uh just the original card too but Sweet. it's it's just I can't something wait for mine. I'll be looking for it in the mail. Yes, <laughs> I'll hook you up. You yeah, will definitely be, up, you be a red card holder. So yeah, it's, I'll have it's, a red uh, card. So you just walk by me and I'll slip my info in your phone. Yeah, you'll just be like, boom. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's it's super cool. I'm so, so this is awesome. this is great. I love I love your energy. I love Thank the you. idea that um, I get to share uh, some of the stuff that I've learned because really going inside was the thing that changed it for me is yeah. just realizing why am I even doing this? I mean, there, yeah. there, all the bad stuff happening around and everything else. And then I realized, you know what? You get to decide. You make that choice. And so I did. You, you choose your environment. You put yourself there. All those things that happened to me were because of me. Um, I, I think that I believe that there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. Awesome. That's right. Your favorite. Yes. Quote. If you, if you, if you, the you moon, wear the right no suit, wear. you can wear the right stuff. You can go to the moon. You can <laughs> I, on a space suit. I can be on the moon because I wore the right clothing, but I decided that clothing and then yeah. you can put yourself anywhere and you can decide to be happy or not. But that decision is, is solely rests on you as an entrepreneur to figure out why you're doing that. And, and now that I have been um, just for the past three years, oh, it's just just like it's a weight lifted off of me. I'm not striving, trying to make that dollar, trying to make things happen. I, yeah. I don't need to help. The, the other parable I told you, too, was kindly let me help you, said the monkey to the yeah. fish to keep you from drowning drowning i'll put you safely up the tree uh-huh I mean, we don't know what's good for someone else yeah. we're the yeah. only people that know what's good for us so yeah. i think that paying attention to yourself is the most important thing you can do number one put yourself first folks that's the yeah. moral of the story literally yep. really do that do the work yeah. go inside Yep. Yay. Thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. so much, Jeff. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you for all your great energy and insight. Innovation. I love it. So yeah. <laughs> oh, there's lots of, and that's what I love is, is people come to me and like, I'm trying to this new software. I'm like, Hey, if you plug this software and this and this, and then we use some artificial intelligence, we'll tie all that together. And mm -hmm. then you'll be able to calculate out and figure out how you can serve your clients better, but also serve yourself and mm -hmm. track your temperature, your diet, just anything it feels right? better. Everything feels better. Yeah. And then you attract your dream clients too. So it's really awesome. Right. Um, and I know everyone's going to resonate on that. So you guys yeah. check Jeff out, red card dot make anything red easy card. Yeah. Dot make anything easy.com. Yay. Thank you Yay. guys. Chat Charity. Soon. You're amazing. Thank Thanks. you so much. I really appreciate Thank you, uh, Jeff. getting to talk to you always. I can't wait till we do it again. <laughs> Me too.